Hey, this is Joe from HomestudioCorner.com. Got another Studio One video for you. In this video, I want to talk about the mix window. There's a couple ways to get to the mix window. You can click down here where it says oh, mix, but you'll notice that F3 also does that. That's what I like to use, F3, on, off, on, off. Now, what I love about the mix window in Studio One is it kind of adapts to whatever you need. And let me just go through some of my favorite features. This isn't going to be an exhaustive um exposition on every single thing you can do in the mix window. Some of my favorite features and the things you'll probably use 80-90% of the time. The other stuff doesn't, doesn't matter to me as much. So let me give you some of an overview of some of the awesomeness that is here. So the, the first thing is that I can resize the window to be what I need it to be. It doesn't have to fill up the whole screen. I can resize it down here. Uh, and then also if I have, let's say over here, I've got a lot of sins. Let's say I didn't have many sins. I can kind of resize these down as well. And if I go way down here, I can still scroll through whatever's there. So like here, I've got more plugins. It still allows me to scroll and see them all. That's kind of annoying, but I can adjust this size. Pro Tools was kind of, you had blocks of five and you were kind of stuck with it. Here, I can really accommodate however I want it to be. It's pretty cool. Another cool feature, if you use stock plugins like I like to do most of the time, if you single click on that particular plugin, especially the EQ and the compressor, it actually gives you a readout, a visual of what's happening on that plugin. If you're a member over at Dueling Mixes, you've seen me do this before. It's a great way to quickly see how have I EQ'd all of these tracks. Oh, interesting. That's how I've done it. You can see it at a glance. You can even change it at a glance. Uh, it's not terribly precise, but, but you can do it. Um, so that's really neat. Um, what else I want to show you? Okay, just setting up the way you want to view uh, the mixer. I've had a lot of people contact me saying, Hey, Joe, your mixer looks way different from mine. How did you do that? Well, it has to do with these little guys over here. Uh, there's a couple. There's narrow and normal. And then there is small and large, which basically is kind of short and tall. Most of the time, if you watch me mix, I'll be using the tall setting, but I might switch between narrow and normal. So this is normal. You can see everything nicely. Everything has a fader. All the buttons are, it's, it's laid out like you expect a mixer window to be laid out. If I click on this and switch to narrow, then as you can see, everything got smaller. So this is great for those sessions where you have lots of tracks and you want to see them all at once, or uh, for those sessions where maybe you've got a, a smaller screen and you need to be able to see more on your screen than what you're able to see. So here, if I hit play, you can see, look what happens. The meters are here, which is really neat. And we can change the height if we don't need to see quite as much of that and we want to see the arrange window in the background. And then if we switch back to the normal view, you'll see the meters are down here next to the fader. That's one big change. So if you're doing a static mix and you're just focusing on levels or you're close to the end of the mix and you just want to make sure levels are okay, this is a great view. You can't see plugins, you can just see faders and you can see a lot of tracks at once, which is great. The other cool thing you can do, let's say you have a couple tracks you want to focus on. You're done with drums, you're done with bass. Let's say you're focusing on uh, the lead vocal. Well, you can double click on that and it'll open up and into normal view. So you can see everything on that lead vocal and adjust that. And then double clicking somewhere on the track will bring it back narrow. So if we want to focus on the lead vocal, the doubled vocal, and uh, these acoustic guitars over here, we can just double click on each one and now we can see each of them. And then when we're done, we can close them back down. It's a great focusing tool. Instead of seeing 50 plugins in front of you that can really distract you, you can just go in and focus on the things you need to focus on. It's a great way to force yourself to listen. Right now, I can't see any plugins, I can't see any settings, all I see are levels, and that kind of helps me just turn my eyes off for a second and listen. Now over here you'll notice separate from all your tracks in the session is your main output. Uh, and so this allows me to put bus compression uh, both before and after the fader, depending on how you want to do it. I usually do compression before the fader and anything else like metering or limiting and things like that after. Uh, it has to do with where it comes if, it, if it's happening before the volume. So if I do a volume automation fade out at the end of the song, uh, I don't want the compression to happen after the fade out because it's going to change how the compression is working. So anyway, that's there. Another big thing, and I've shown you this before, this is a mono button. It automatically switches what you're listening to to mono. Isn't that great? You can also do that anywhere in the session by clicking down here. It's the same button, two places to find it. Really, really, really nifty. Okay, uh, what else about the window? There's another view. Let me show you the, the short squatty view. So there's two combinations of this short view, okay? There's, it's called small and large. The original one that you've probably seen before is this view. Now it's similar, uh, it's similar to the tall view, 
because the faders and the meters are next to each other, uh, but you can't see the plugins, which is helpful. This is great for tracking sessions when you're recording and you need to see what the audio is doing here and just keep an eye on levels down here. It's a great way to do it um, if you want to be able to see things a little more clearly and have a nice thick um, you want to have a nice thick channel strip so you can see the faders easily, but you don't want it to take up the whole screen. Great way to do that. Uh, but if you want to do plugins, I don't like this terribly well because you have to click on this arrow here. Let's say we want to adjust this tom track. Clicking on the arrow opens up our inserts here and our sends here. I'll show you on a lead vocal. It's a little more. There's a few things there you can see. So here's the lead vocal, and now all our plugins are here. So it's kind of nifty. It's kind of nice. Uh, but I don't like having to do that. So it's it, to me, I don't use this view very much. You can double click and it'll do it. Double clicking over here will turn it back. We'll close it back. Uh, but you have to kind of open and close the tracks. So again, this is mainly I'll use this for tracking sometimes. The other view, if you turn both of these on, the narrow and the small, then you get this. It's essentially the same thing. Again, I would use this for tracking, but you have even smaller. You can see more tracks at a time and the faders turn into these cute little little deals that are kind of hard to grab and small. But again, if you need to save real estate because you're mostly focusing on tracking instead of mixing, this is kind of a cool view to get into. So for me, if you see me mixing, 90% of the time it's going to look something like this. And I'll go in and focus on a few tracks at a time, then I'll close them back up so I can get a big picture view. Or if I have a lot of buses at the end of my session, I'll have these open so I can adjust these more readily. And then I'll have everything else like this. One other quick tip, anything you see that is a darker colored uh, track with a dark gray fader, that is a bus. All the light gray are actual audio tracks, the dark gray are buses. Quick way to see that without having to look at a symbol down here or try to figure out and remember what's what. If it's a dark fader, it is a bus, and that's super helpful. Okay, so that's it for the mix window overview. Uh, there's a lot more stuff we can do here, and we're going to get into all of that, but this will get you going. One more quick thing. If you are the kind of person who uses two uh, two screens and you want your mix window entirely in a separate screen, you can click this detach button and that will open it up in a separate screen for you. All the same features still apply, but you can adjust the, the width and the size even more and you can drag this over to another computer monitor if that's how you like to work. And then F3 still opens it and closes it. Uh, I don't use this. I tried it for a little bit, but I prefer to just have it right down here. It just pops up and back down. Oh, and one other quick thing I remembered that's also kind of cute. If you are in your arrange window, and you hear something on the lead vocal and you want to focus on that, if you double click on the track here, it will open the mixer window and expand that track if you're in narrow view. Let's try it again. Double click. Boom. The track is expanded and selected. That is very cool. Very cool feature. So if you're like a lot of guys that I see, like Dave Pensado and those folks who like to mix in Pro Tools inside the, the edit window mostly, uh, this allows you to do that. You can adjust volumes here, right? But you can also go do more things by double clicking and it'll open up that session in the mix window. Of course, you can get to the plugins by using this info pane as well. It's not quite as cute looking, so I, pref I would prefer probably to just come over here to the mix window. But instead of doing this, let's say we say, oh, that Tom sounds funny. Let me go find it. Open up the mixer. Where's the Tom? Where's the Tom? Where's the Tom? Where's the Tom? There it is. We can just double click on it. Boom, and it's open and ready for us. Love that feature. I don't use that enough. This is a good reminder for me. I'm going to use it. You should use it. Thanks for watching the video. See you in the next one.